Welcome to the Weather Insights Tropical Briefing. I'm meteorologist Scott Pitney, along with meteorologist Jeff Lindner. We are recording this Wednesday, August 13th, 2025, National Hurricane Center tracking two systems. Of course, we have Tropical Storm Aaron. Okay, let's, yeah. Okay, let's talk about it. Tropical Storm Aaron. Moving in a good clip across the southern Atlantic. Slow down a little bit. It's been moving 20, 22 or so miles per hour. Now down to 17 miles per hour as it moves west. Winds at 50 miles per hour. And Aaron is expected to become a major hurricane by Sunday, but the track's taking it away from the U.S. coastline for now, so that's good news. But I know, Jeff, you'll break that down for us in a minute. And then we have disturbance number one, the latest newcomer to the yellow hatched areas from the National Hurricane Center. This is formed over the Northwest Caribbean. It's expected to move across the Yucatan, already seeing a lot of thunderstorms. We'll look at the IRs in just a second. But it is expected to move in the southwestern Gulf. The chance of development this morning were at 20%, now down to 10%, because if it does develop, it'll be a very short track over the southwestern Gulf. It's expected right now to move in somewhere south of Brownsville. Here are the infrared satellite images. This is kind of showing the big picture. You see Aaron there in the southern Atlantic with that southern track. And then you see the convection over the Yucatan. That's kind of flared up, a little more convection than we saw this morning when you see the image, kind of the time lapse there. There it goes. You can see more development there. You can see it on this closer infrared image. There is the disturbance one, and you see that development that is uh, thunderstorms blowing up over the northern Yucatan looking pretty impressive, but not really any circulation, still very disorganized. But National Hurricane Center are going to keep an eye on that one. Again, very low chance of development, mainly because of the chance it has, the very uh, short track it'll take over the southern Gulf. And then you look at Aaron and its track, and nothing too impressive there right now but again it, it is expected to move into a more favorable environment and become a major hurricane sometime right now the uh, intensity is showing sometime around sunday morning here it is the track and intensity forecast you can see as a hurricane all the way up through saturday and then sunday morning expected to be major as it starts to take that northerly turn jeff break it down for us what are you seeing with these two systems yeah, I want to go back to the infrared here on the uh, wave here on the Yucatan. I'm going to switch this over to the actual visible imagery. So this is what the satellite actually sees. And you can see all these big thunderstorms here. Some of this is uh, heating induced uh, by the, the land mass here of the Yucatan um, heating. But if you look down here, there is some low level turning in the cumulus field uh, just along the Guatemala and Mexico border. And so it's not up here where where the surface flow is but it's actually a very weak surface flow down here and so this is mm. moving out uh over the gulf of mexico out here and, and you can just see since it's so far to the south here it just doesn't have a lot of time or water here even if it were to turn more to the northwest and come up in this direction we're only talking 24 to 30 hours or so before this uh, reaches here the northeast mexican coastline and so there's just there's just not a lot of time. I, th I think if it had more time, and I'll never discount the the Bay of Campeche down here. This is a really favored yeah. area uh, for development. We saw Barry develop down here uh, back in June. And so I'll never discount this area. So it wouldn't totally surprise me if we got a TD or even a weak tropical storm out of this. But it's just there's just not a lot of time here with this system and, and, and its uh, organization. So switching over to Aaron out here, um, it's pretty much falling along. So the, this is all of the ensembles and the deterministic forecast tracks. So the ensembles are all the little black lines in here. And then our major models here, the, the GFS in green, the uh, European here in the red. We have the UK Met here in the blue. And the mean um, of all that here in this black line and these black dots are the National Hurricane Center forecast. And so you can see the Hurricane Center is pretty much right down uh, the middle of this, right along that ensemble mean or the consensus is what we call it, uh, through the period. But it gets a little bit interesting here. Um, you know, starting this morning, we started to once again see some deviations in some of the models, especially the European here now bringing it a little bit further to the west. This is just mm -hmm. one run, so it, it, it could flip back to the east here. 
Um, but the consensus here and the average for the last at least 48 hours or so has been this, this recurve here to the north um, following around the uh, Bermuda high here that's driving it to the west-northwest. And then we get a weakness, a little front dipping down. You can actually see some of this on the infrared. You can see this kind of troughiness here in the northwest Atlantic. And so Aaron's going to come up in this direction and want to turn in to that troughiness and round that ridge. And, and that still looks like the most likely scenario. The question is where exactly does that happen? Is that turn a little bit more delayed where it comes a little bit further west? And, and even if it were to come a little bit further west, it still looks like it misses the Bahamas and for the most part misses the east coast of the United States. Um, but if we were to see some trends here and some shifts to the West, um, you know, we might have to keep a closer eye here on Eastern North Carolina yep. and some of these areas that kind of jut out here into the Atlantic Basin. Hmm. I also wanted to show you the, the we've been kind of looking at this a little bit this, this season. So this is a lot going on here. There's a lot of lines, a lot of colors, a lot of dots. <laughs> um, but what we have here, this is, this is Aaron. And so this shows the ensembles with the European, and then it also has the Google, AI data, and you can see it's it's they're, they're generally speaking they're they're on top of each other here. So this kind of gives you a a pretty high confidence forecast track at least through the next four to five days. You can see the spread increases after that. But I did want to show you that what's interesting about our little system down here in the Yucatan area is that the European ensembles are actually showing this fairly well, yeah. uh, and they're showing some some uh, dots down here about where it is right now. Mm -hmm. What's interesting is that none of the Google AI uh, models are showing anything out here. And so that that is a little interesting because they have been uh, showing things fairly well. And I'm just step this forward in time into tomorrow and this kind of moves out in the Gulf and then heads up towards the Northeast Mexican coast. And what's interesting is not one single uh, ensemble from the Google uh, um, model here shows any development here in the southwestern Gulf of Mexico. So it's yeah. kind of the European all out here on its own with this. And I think that's why we've seen those percentages remain fairly low. Um, and you can see this crosses, this is by Saturday morning or by Friday evening, and this is inland by Friday evening here in Northeast Mexico or South Texas. And so there's just not a lot of time with that Gulf wave if it were moving slower and had more time over water maybe yeah so the the uh track forecast for night for uh tropical storm uh aaron uh looks pretty straightforward and then you can see here's the intensity forecast this has been kind of wavering a little bit you know we talked on sunday aaron would probably be a hurricane by now that has not happened it's been a little bit slower to develop uh with the dry stable conditions out in the atlantic it finally looks like it's getting itself together back to the ir here you got the big burst of thunderstorms very near the center. The center may be a little bit dislocated to the north and east, um, but it looks like it's finally on its way to strengthening. And you can see these models here uh, that bring this up relatively quickly and and uh, bring this up to, well, that didn't work, uh, bring this up towards a major hurricane. And I don't see there's a lot of significant differences from what the National Hurricane Center is saying in, in the forecast here. So it's probably gonna be a hurricane sooner than later. And then we'll see major hurricane or not in the southwest Atlantic here. Uh, there's some indications there may be a little bit of wind shear, but as that storm size grows, it's not as impacted by dry air and wind shear as, as to say it was now. And then the last thing I'll show is those European probabilities here. So you can see, and I think this is probably a little bit elevated than what it actually is. We've been kind of talking about this. The Europeans been been... Uh, kind of overzealous, if you will, this year with development probabilities. And here's kind of another example of that buried down here in the southwestern Gulf. Uh, probabilities anywhere from 40 to 50, maybe even 60 percent of at least getting a tropical depression. Like I said, I wouldn't totally rule it out, but this model is kind of all out there on its own. Uh, it's showing any development down here, and that's why the Hurricane Center is keeping it uh, you know, those chances of development relatively on the low side. Mm -hmm. uh, what is also interesting is is with this wave coming up towards northeast Mexico and the moisture plume with it, um, you would expect to see more precipitation here in south Texas. I don't know if this is a function of the Weather Prediction Center just, just hasn't like latched onto this yet or what, but I think we're going to see some more precipitation down here in south Texas and what this is showing, especially Friday into Saturday. And we kind of have this weak troughling across uh, East Texas down into the upper Texas coast. And so as that moisture kind of comes in here on Friday, Saturday, 
interacts with that trough, we may see some enhanced uh, showers and thunderstorms and rain. So this isn't a big, you know, big wet system, it appears. But I think the, the weather is going to be a little bit wetter, at least down here along the coast of South Texas and the coastal bend as we get into Friday and Saturday. And then that kind of runs into this big high that's sitting over southwest Texas. And so we'll see. Um, I, I would imagine this is going to trend wetter here over the next 24 hours as that wave kind of comes up towards uh, that port, that part here Yeah, of South Texas. it's amazing. So, It's almost showing nothing. I mean, it's, uh, I, I don't know about that. it's very unusual since that's where it's supposed to land. But uh, yeah, yeah. Well, thank you for joining us for this special edition of Weather Insights Tropical Briefing. And join us next time. You can subscribe to our YouTube channel. Make sure you click on notifications. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff, for joining, and we'll see you next time.